welcome everyone to yet another video. I'm Imaginer Dave and today I'll be showing you the new and improved turntable version 4. In this video I'll explain you how the turntable works, the differences between version 3 and 4 and at the end, after the standard redstone version is explained, I will take you through the computercraft integration for the turntable. But this integration adds a feature where the train keeps its schedule and name after turning. So if you have access to the needed mods, stay tuned or skip to that part. As most of you will realize already, a turntable has one purpose, to turn engines or wagons around. However, turntables are not really in use nowadays in most modern railways. They used to be really common in the steam days to turn steam engines, which had to be running forwards to run fast in a safe manner, around. This turntable, which works with Create and Steam and Rails, isn't different from that. It turns engines that drive onto it around on a 180 degree increment. This way you can make realistic steam terminus stations like I have over at my Create SMP series. Now, how does this work, you might wonder? Well, it relies on one basic principle which is added by steam and rails. Automatic, disassembly and reassembly. By putting a deployer next to a station and adding a wrench inside of it, we can disassemble and reassemble with a redstone signal. By letting the deployer hit the station, it changes the state of the train which is currently stopped on it, from assembled to not assembled. When there are nearby bogies to assemble, this also works the other way around. By using this technique we can now get engines to rotate with bearings if we can stick these to a bearing. This is where the second part comes into play, the stickers. On the turntable version 4 we have four sticker assemblies. These assemblies are under the sides of the tracks and move upwards after the train is disassembled. It is necessary to do this after train disassembly so that they don't collide with a possible blocks being in the same location on the engine or train. Once these stickers are up we can toggle them with a redstone link to stick the engine or the train to the rest of the turntable. Now that we have one stuck together build of the engine and the turntable, we can rotate the central axis with a mechanical bearing to rotate it around. After this we do the whole process in reverse. After the turning is stopped, the redstone links toggle to unstick the train from the sticker assemblies. The stickers move downwards, do not interfere with any train parts and look better when there is no train. And the train is reassembled, but this time by the station that's exactly mirrored on the other side. You might still wonder why there are four sticker assemblies and not just one. This is for two reasons. The first reason is if you have engines with tenders that these tenders are a separate glue contraption from the main engine. If you would only stick to the engine, the tender would simply not rotate due to it not being connected to the table. The other reason is that I visually have a preference for the mirrored look on the turntable, that's why the sticker assemblies are on both sides of the tracks. So yes, technically speaking, you can remove two of them. But Dave, I have a train which consists of three bogies that I glued together smartly. Wouldn't it leave my separate bogies behind too? Yes, it would. That's why I added something to counter that to my trains. Inside of my engines that have three or more bogies that are articulating from each other, I added stickers and redstone links. These redstone links are triggered after the train is disassembled and make it so that the stickers inside of the train merges the separate glue sections together. That way the whole engine is stuck to the table including those bogies. After rotating, these toggle again to enable you to reassemble the engine with the articulating bogies. For this operation there is a separate redstone link which you can see on the screen right now. As long as you set the redstone link inside your engines to the same frequency as this one, it should work. That's basically how it works. The rest comes down to the redstone timing, sequence gear shifts and some compact power transfers inside of the table. All this combined makes this contraption able to work just like a realistic turntable.
Besides that the redstone of the version 4 is a lot more compact and there's also a CC integration to it, the new version has some visual upgrades too. The table itself is thinner and the outer circle is more rounded. This was managed by adding in Copycats Plus, but of course if you don't have this mod you can still make it function without these visual details. Another upgrade is that the amount of sticker assemblies has been lowered. This was done to make it a little bit more visually appealing since the green stickers don't look that good on the turntable but are definitely necessary. The last upgrade to it is that the redstone timing is way faster. The old one had time between arrival and starting the actual program, which you can still add of course if you like that, but now it also works almost instantly. Besides this, the old one had a slower disassembly slash sticker phase, both whilst disassembling and assembling, which would make it wait even longer. As I said before, for this new turntable version 4 there's also a computer craft integration. This integration adds some easy configuration for the turntable and makes it possible to have the trains drive on it with a schedule and to give the schedule back to the train after reassembly. This does not only happen for the schedule however, since the name is also stored within the PC. For this integration to work, you also need a mod called Unlimited Peripheral Works to be able to communicate with all the necessary create components. In order to get the script on the computer, you need to simply drag it into your screen whilst the computer interface is open. After that, you rename the file from Imagineer Dave's turntable version 4 to startup.lua and now it boots automatically on restart. The last thing to do is to set up the link between the hardware and the script itself. In the contraption you see modems. These are to link up the create and computer craft components to the computer itself. When you have set everything up, you can right click these and it will say peripheral, then the name, connected to network. Remember these names of what you are connecting since you will need to write these down in the script. At the top of the script you see some IDs which you have to change to link to the script. The first is the arrival station ID, which is the station where the train arrives on. This is basically where the comparator output comes from. You can simply add the ID at the end of the create underscore station underscore, which is between the quotation marks. The next thing to change is the departure station ID, which is the station where the train will reassemble on. This works the same as the first, but it should have a different ID. Next up, you can set the speed at which the turntable rotates. I chose speed 2 since it looks visually realistic while still being not too slow. Keep in mind, the faster you make this, the more SU you also need to input. After this, there are two more peripherals, the link between the modem and computer, to set up. The sticker gear shift ID is next in line. This is the outer sequence gear shift, which connects through the sticker assemblies. Again, right click the modem next to it until it says peripheral and then the name connected to network. Remember the name and change the sticker gear shift ID to that. Now repeat the same for the turning gear shift ID which can be found by toggling the modem next to the other gear shift. After saving and exiting the script you can now restart the PC and after a bit it should work. In the script I build in a few safeties so that if the server or your world restarts during the turning, it will start, continue or end the various steps after rejoining. If you find any bugs with it, please report them to me over on my Discord with a description of what happened so that I can update the script in the future. As always, the schematic and the script can be found over at my Discord. If you want sneak peeks of these kinds of contraptions, early create SMP plans or schematics for my world, be sure to join my uh, Patreon which is down below. As always, I thank you for watching, this is Imagine Dave, signing off, so bye bye!